Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Christine with Gage Girl Training, an online meal planning and coaching service. I'm a food scientist and chemical engineer. In today's video, we are going to discuss how does cortisol affect muscle growth? So let's get started. We all know that cortisol is often known as the stress hormone. It plays a complex role in muscle growth. Cortisol is essential for energy regulation as well as recovery. So having elevated cortisol at times is not necessarily a bad thing. However, chronically high elevated cortisol levels is responsible for muscle loss and it could actually be detrimental to nude muscle development. So I'm going to explain why. So cortisol has a catabolic effect on muscle protein synthesis. This means cortisol breaks the muscle proteins down into amino acids. And during times of intense acute stress, your body is going to rely on those energy sources to survive, to thrive, to get through a very stressful situation. However, when the cortisol levels are elevated for extended periods of time, what's ultimately going to end up happening is protein synthesis decreases, muscle breakdown increases, and it becomes harder to build and retain lean muscle mass. Number two, the cortisol and testosterone balance. Cortisol and testosterone have an inverse relationship meeting. When cortisol levels are low, testosterone levels are high. When testosterone levels are low, cortisol levels are high. This is very important because testosterone, a key anabolic muscle building hormone is going to be broken down when cortisol redirects your protein synthesis. It's a very big deal because the hormones that would have been responsible for gaining lean muscle in your body, those precursors are being utilized to manage your stress levels. So the thing is stress and muscle gains they do not go hand in hand, and the more stressed out you are, the more and more and more you are compromising your gains. Number three, cortisol and insulin resistance. So cortisol increases your blood glucose levels by promoting gluconeogenesis. This is when glucose is produced from non-carb sources. This happens all the time in people who are in ketosis and ketogenic approaches. The problem is this can lead to insulin resistance when chronically elevated. So you can still have high blood sugar even if you are eating a low carb diet. And that may sound extremely crazy because the thing is, what your body is doing is it is elevating the blood glucose in order to provide glucose for your brain to thrive and manage and survive through a challenging situation. So this will impair muscle recovery. This is going to make it harder for your muscles to absorb glucose and amino acids which are needed for recovery and growth. This is going to impair nutrient delivery to your cells. Number four, cortisol and inflammation. So short-term inflammation is definitely part of the muscle building process. However, chronically high elevated cortisol levels can lead to excessive inflammation, impairing muscle recovery, increasing soreness, and making it harder to train consistently at high intensity. Number five, cortisol and sleep disruption. Now, cortisol naturally follows a diurnal rhythm, meaning it can be high in the morning and then it's going to taper off in the evening. However, chronic stress, poor sleep, overtraining will disrupt this cycle. It's going to lead to poor sleep quality because deep sleep is when growth hormone is released. Disrupted sleep hinders muscle repair, growth, and overall recovery. How do we manage cortisol for better muscle growth? So I realize it's not just enough to tell you guys to stop stressing out. If it were that simple, you would have done it already. So number one, we want to optimize recovery. We want to prioritize sleep, make rest, deep restful sleep a top priority, active recovery, stress management techniques, meditation, deep breathing. But if you are struggling to sleep, I strongly recommend you guys get started on magnesium glycinate supplementation at least one hour before bedtime. Only take it at bedtime. I recommend the Gage Life Nutrition Supplements brand. The link is in the description box if you want to get started on this. It's excellent for naturally lowering cortisol levels. The next thing you want to do is balance your training intensity. So overtraining without Proper recovery can spike your cortisol level. So it is important to include deload weeks as well as 
proper rest days. If you want more information on this, comment below and I'd be happy to do a separate video on all these things. The next thing you can do to naturally lower those cortisol levels is to eat enough carbs and protein. So carbohydrates can naturally lower cortisol post-workout. Now remember, post-workout. Carbohydrates lower your cortisol post-workout. So when you weight train, your muscles are depleted of glycogen. This is going to replenish that lost intramuscular glycogen and promote recovery. Protein supports muscle protein synthesis, which is going to help offset the cortisol's catabolic effect on the muscle. So you have the protein building it up and even though the cortisol is breaking it down, getting enough protein can certainly help build the muscles back up, getting the appropriate amount of carbohydrates post-workout because post-workout your carbohydrate tolerance is higher across all macro types. If you are not sure what macro type you are and you want to learn more information about your carb tolerance level, I encourage you guys to pick up my book, Unlock Your Macro Type. It's available everywhere books are sold, Barnes and Noble. You can get the audio version, hardcover, Amazon, the whole nine yards. The next thing you want to do is focus on your hydration and your electrolytes. Drinking water is easy to do, but it's easy to forget. And dehydration increases cortisol. I repeat, dehydration increases cortisol. So guys, carry water with you everywhere you go, wherever it's practical. I understand there are some scenarios where it's not practical, especially when traveling, but especially when combined with high stress, sleep deprivation, and dehydration, that is the perfect cocktail for elevated cortisol. The next one is you want to minimize stimulants. Now, you may not know this, but excessive caffeine intake can elevate your cortisol levels, especially when it is combined with high stress and sleep deprivation. Now, in short, we need to understand that cortisol in and of itself is not inherently bad. It is a necessary hormone for energy, inflammation control because it is going to provide a quick reserve of an energy source to the brain to help navigate the stressful situation. Managing stress, training intelligently, optimizing nutrition, all of these three things when working together in perfect harmony can help to keep the cortisol in check and improve your muscle development. So if any of you guys would like a deeper dive on specific training techniques related to managing the cortisol levels, how to structure hormone-friendly workouts, please let me know and I'd be happy to do an entire series on this if you guys are interested. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.